Hey, before we get started in this episode, uh, go ahead and follow, like, and share. Um, If you've been impacted by this uh, podcast or you feel like you can relate at all, maybe there's somebody out there that might be able to as well. So go ahead and like, follow, share, get the word out there, and uh, thank you for being a part of uh, Catch My Six. Hey everyone, welcome to Catch My Six. Thanks for listening in. Today we're talking to a friend of ours named Mike. He's a psych major at Penn State. We're talking about some different psychological things and his reason why he got into psychology and his story. Another EXP episode for y'all. Thanks for listening in. Remember to comment, like, and share. Let your friends know. Trying to get our voices heard. Hopefully we can help somebody out by listening in on our episode and maybe learning that there's more out there than just their own pain. Please enjoy. All right, so we're back uh, with another episode. Got another EXP for you, um, and uh, it's with my boy Mikey. Uh, we served together out in uh, Abilene, Texas, for a little bit, and uh, he's here to kind of share his story. He reached out the other day, and we just got to talking. And I prompted uh, the question, "Do you want to be on our podcast?" And he agreed. So, Mikey, how are you, man? I'm doing great. Glad to be here. Um, yeah, so I'll just talk a little bit about myself. I grew up in Pittsburgh, PA, and uh, high school was pretty good. I was like middle of the pack. I knew everybody, friends with everybody. And then I went to, I was like a goody two shoes guy, um, not really rebellious at all. And then I made the mistake of going to IUP. So if you guys don't know what that is, it's uh, usually in the top 20 party schools in the nation every year. So needless to say, I, without the structure, I had a little too much fun and then went to my plan B, which was always there. My mother served in the Air Force. So I was like, you know what? This college isn't my thing. I did give it a go after my, my first year. I went back a second year, tried didn't work out and so I went to the Air Force and got to Dias, Texas in 2011 and uh, I kind of had a, a pretty pretty good time there. I met a lot of people like Casey and learned a lot and um, I had a wife there and like uh on tim's episode like think you know we kind of got married a little too young and we or i found out she was cheating on me and well, this was right after i went to germany i found out she was cheating on me with someone i worked with and since i was the new guy and he was the like the the head honcho. Um, I was kind of shunned and thrown to Dash 21, which is like this off corner site, like out of sight, out of mind. And um, that's kind of where I started my like negative attitude and negative thoughts that we're all talking about on the podcast here today. How to how to bounce back from those and improve yourself. Is that where it's like the whole? like process of change started for you or did you continue down like a negative path and then you found yourself that's where the like negative spiral went and not many people know about it but i started drinking a lot and like every every chance i got i'd go out on the town and i'd black out maybe a couple times a week and um I ended up getting a DUI. I don't even remember. I just woke up. I actually crashed my car. And I, like, woke up upside down in my car. 
and that's kind of when I was like, oh, I should probably, you know, take a chill pill and calm down. So I went to the alcohol anonymous classes they had on base, and it was more like a like an educational course to me, I guess. I just didn't think, you know, like oh, four drinks could, you know, you could still black out from that if you, you know, don't don't watch yourself. But um, yeah, I got reprimanded for that, and then that's kind of where I started to like care about my work and you know take care of myself not sitting at home drinking or going out drinking all the time dang man so upside down in your car yeah and it was a it was a it was a nice scion tc i love that car was that uh was that the one that uh you had in texas did you have it shipped out to uh uh germany yep oh, okay i didn't know you uh shipped it out there but yeah <laughs> dang man so blacking out drinking uh kind of going crazy and you know we we've talked a little bit about coping mechanisms and where you know your your mind kind of takes you and um that's that's crazy that uh you know you kind of went down that road you know it's not uncommon you know um but uh, i'm really glad that after the accident you're not you know extremely hurt or uh, you know, nobody was hurt in that accident, uh, but it definitely woke you up. So I'm happy for that. Yeah, it uh, it really does sound like that was a, it was one of those experiences that other people don't necessarily get to talk about because they're, they either, it, they died or they killed somebody else and they're not around to, they're not around to talk about it. So that is, it. You, you are pretty blessed for that. And I'm really happy to see that you were able to turn your life to a more positive direction exactly yeah exactly i luckily uh, i was in like a street in the middle of nowhere and i just like veered off into a field so i'm like i mean obviously really happy i didn't like injure anybody or injure myself but that was about when i started to realize like oh maybe i'm you know a little out of control here yeah because uh so me and my wife have a history of or my wife has a history of al alcohol problems and it Put, it, it pushed in our marriage like I talked about in my episode. And one of the things that we talked or that was talked to us about while we were in our therapy sessions was a, a large majority of alcoholics don't think they're alcoholics. They don't think they have a problem with alcohol and it doesn't kill them immediately. It's, it's years and years and years and years and years. And then they just die from alcohol related incidents and, and, uh, and stuff like that happens. And, you just don't ever like my wife only found my wife only came to terms with the fact that she was an alcoholic because of the issues we went through. And there's, and you came to terms with not necessarily that you were an alcoholic, but you had an unhealthy relationship with alcohol and that because of an issue you went through, but then you got to think about there's hundreds of thousands of people that don't have that problem or that don't have that insight, not necessarily problem. They don't have that insight of like they didn't do or go through something that opened their eyes to the fact that, Hey, I need to take a step back. I got a problem and I, I've identified it in the po worst possible way and I need to get it fixed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think it's crazy that some people actually look for that sign. You know what I mean? Um, I've actually had people, um, you know, that I've talked to and, uh, they've told me like, man, maybe I'm, maybe I'm just looking to get caught and it's like, no, you're not, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, that's, that's crazy, but like I said, I'm glad nobody got hurt, and I'm glad you're okay. And so that that sent you into um, that sent you into uh, uh, Alcohols Anonymous, you said, and you learned a lot there. Um, and what was the next step on your on your journey? Where did that lead to? So that was in I want to say that was in 2015, and that's when I started to look into um like psychology because initially oh i don't think i mentioned that earlier i'm a psychology major now at penn state but uh that's i think that's what kind of sparked my interest because when i went to aa i got along really well with my counselor and that's where i thought maybe i want to be an addiction counselor because i have you know a story that will relate to potential clients and uh, that's kind of started my journey when I got back to Pittsburgh in 2000, 
16, um, I applied to be a psych major at Penn State. And throughout the three and a half years that I've been here, I've learned a lot. And one of the classes I've taken was positive psychology and well-being. And that kind of sparked my idea. Um, well, I seen Casey's, I think it was a Facebook story. And he was talking about, like, thinking about a few good things that happened that day. And I had shot him a message like, oh, I had a, a wellness class that this was a, this is an actual thing they use in therapy. And I thought it was really cool. And it helped me a lot. You, before bed, you write about three good things that happened to you that day. Or three good things that you've witnessed. Um, it could be something simple like you told a joke and, you know, you made a stranger laugh. So, you know, it makes you feel good about yourself. You you cheered someone up. Um, an example of mine, I was having a rough day and I came home and my dog sat on the couch and, like, laid his head on my lap. And that doesn't sound like a big thing, but he's like he never does that. He always lays on the floor, and he's not not doesn't really like to be held or anything. But you know, it seemed like he knew I had a rough day, and he came and comforted me. So that was one of my big things. But the whole the whole idea behind the three good things exercise is that it teaches you to appreciate the small things in life, and that even something minute and minuscule that you think would happen if you think back on it you're going to realize like oh today really wasn't that bad because you know you have these examples of something good that happened and something that improved your day and you said uh you said reflecting on that before you go to bed it actually has a like a, a positive impact in your brain right and then when you wake up the next day you're already like reflecting on those three things. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. You you do it before bed, and then you can write it down. That studies have shown that that creates more improvement because it's concrete and it's in front of you. Or you can just simply be laying in bed, and you know just think it in your head. And then when you wake up, you go back to those things, and so you're already starting off your day on, on a good note. And yeah. we did that. We wrote that down every day for a month, and I t afterwards it was like the craziest thing. And it's like the smallest things you come up with, or something you you know that probably happened to you a few times a week before that, where you never like recalled it. You write that down, and you're like, "Wow, that happens a lot." So like, you start to notice it in the future. Before you started, until like compared to when you stopped doing that. Um, like or the, after the 30 days, right? Like you're saying you notice like more positive things throughout the day than you did before you started doing that. Yeah, so it, uh, it improved, you know, focusing on the positive throughout the day and you start to notice when you're in the moment, like living through the day, you start to notice these smaller things that you might not have thought about before and be like, oh, maybe that can go on my list for later. And and it uh, kind of brightens you up right then and there, too. So uh, be honest with me. Um, in the beginning, because I'm just imagining myself doing this. Um, in the beginning, were you focused on, like, big things? Like, like the positive had to be, you know, you cleaned up the whole house for, you know, your, your girlfriend or whatever it might be. Like, it had to be a big thing in order for it to qualify. Yeah, they tell you, like, not to focus on the big things. But, like... The first couple of days, it's really hard because you're like trying to think of something small and you're like, oh, well, I didn't really do anything today. But then it could be something like a friend called you or like a relative, like I saw my grandma or just like my brother posted pictures of my nephews on Facebook. And, you know, it was like they were playing with some toy I bought them. But yeah, at the beginning, it's like it's kind of hard for the first couple of days. Because you are trying to, like, when you look back, you only think about the big things that happened that day. Uh, yeah, and it just, it, it's like one of those things where it's like, some people may not even feel like they deserve that just positive comment from their own self. Like, they may feel embarrassed about the fact that, like, 
they're going to talk positively in their own head to their own brain. And the whole idea of doing something like that could just be weird to people if they've never done it before. And I can totally understand that. It's like, I'm, I, I'm, I can't really take a compliment. I'm really bad about taking compliments. And, uh, so the whole idea of like giving myself a compliment is like, it's just, it makes me, it makes me feel weird. That's like, that, that's like something crazy people do. You just say like, okay, thanks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, oh no, 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 no. Don't thank me for it. It wasn't that hard. It wasn't that hard. It only took me, it only took me an hour and I spent all day nervously debating it and the, no, 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 but it's, but it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. That's the kind of person I am. So. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm completely the same way. My wife tells me all the time that I need to just take a compliment. And, uh, but it, it's hard because it's, you, you don't want to seem like you're coming off like arrogant. When someone compliments you, it's like, how do you take, like, oh, thanks. I appreciate that. You know what I mean? And it's like, I, I don't know. I, I totally, I totally get what you're saying. And then the, the putting your mind in a positive mindset, like focusing on the positive, telling, yourself positive things about your day or yourself can be extremely awkward you know what i mean oh, yeah. um, i agree with you 100 because i i just started doing the whole uh, positive affirmations thing when i started that it was like you know like i would just tell myself like i am loved i am like worthy of love and, and like when i'm saying that i'm like man what, like weirdo you know but I'm glad you like worded it like that because I was thinking the first couple of days I did it, it's kind of like you're brainwashing yourself into thinking like, oh, I'm happy. Oh, that, you know, that, a lot of good yeah. things did happen today. <laughs> it's like you're um, you're trying to like make stuff up, but it really does help. Uh, to bring it back around to th to something you had mentioned earlier, because uh, it's just still sticking on my brain. My therapist, I mean, my wife had back uh, when we were in Abilene. He also had an issue with alcohol and didn't drink anymore. And, and it, he wouldn't tell us what that issue was because it's a professional relationship thing. He was like, I can't get that close. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm just wondering, without you like incriminating anybody you may be in class with, but do you see that kind of experience with classmates or maybe even teachers that like they themselves may have had some kind of traumatic event or some kind of addiction issue that they overcame and are like, you know what? I want to go help other people with the same thing. Yeah, definitely. I, um, I'm in a, a branch school, so I only have a couple people in all my classes and I've got to know them pretty well over the years and just like discussions we've had in class. I've learned like things that have happened to them in the past that have swayed which kind of path in psychology they want to go to. Like the one girl, she wants to be like a family counselor because she had an abusive mother and Another girl who's a real close friend of mine now, she's been in a lot of toxic relationships and she wants to be like a marriage and relationship counselor. And um, one of my professors, she's like, her style of therapy is attachment, which is like, it's kind of rooted in how your parents treated you and how you were raised and like your environment growing up and how it shapes your personality as an adult. And... She chose that path because she said that she's had, like, a distant mother and, like, cold and, like, didn't show her any affection. So that, like, kind of sparked her interest in attachments. So, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of funny how everyone has had that or seems to have had that kind of personal experience that shapes which direction they want to go in. So, so you wouldn't say it's uncommon that the students and teachers you work around and go to school with have experiences that were traumatic or were at least traumatic enough for them that they were like, I want to go help others or I want to go learn more about these things. Yeah, exactly. Almost, almost every one of them actually. See, that's crazy to me. Like, well, okay, hold on. It's not crazy. It just, it, uh, that to me just speaks to the fact that everybody has gone through something. So not necessarily just people that want to be psych majors or psychologists or anything like that, but like everybody has something in their history. And that's something that motivates them either in a negative way or in a positive way. And that's, I mean, that's the whole point of this podcast is like, we just want other people to hear that, that there's other people out there that are struggling. It may not be the same struggles, but it's struggles. Exactly. Yeah. yeah I think wanna... it's the... Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, yeah, we want to look out for each other and, and, uh, people do care about, you know, people they don't even know. And it's, it's kind of good, great to see. 
when there's so much like negativity, you know, that surrounds everybody. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. I think uh, I think what like what we hear often in the news of you know shootings and um, you know people getting hurt or robberies or whatever, like all that stuff is like one off experiences. You know what I mean? Like it's it's one person who chooses to be um, negative. You know, for instance, um, the other day there was a shooting down the street from my house, and uh, but like I live in a pretty good neighborhood. You know, you don't. You don't really hear about that stuff. You don't see it. You don't, you know what I mean? Like I feel 100% comfortable going outside and saying hi to all my neighbors and talking with any of them. And, you know, like everyone is generally happy and supportive of each other. It's just like those very few like one-off people who, you know, whatever they're going through has kind of led them to where they're at and they, you know, feel like they're isolated or alone or the hate is too strong or whatever it is. And so, um, yeah. And statistically speaking, we are in the safest decade in world history when it comes to murders, when it comes to uh, domestic violence, when it comes to all these things, like statistically over the last 50 years, all of those rates have gone down, have only gone down, but the 24 hour news cycle cannot get views unless those views are dramatic and mm-hmm dramatic views are is what gets it so they will put everything on the news that they can that's negative because that's what draws attention when but you don't hear about all like i follow a subreddit on reddit called uplifting news because it's just uplifting news they do not allow negativity in there and that thing is full of news just as much as the news is full of like drama and disturbing things so the world is beautiful out there me deleting my facebook was one of the best things i've ever done i don't have to look at all the dumb the dumb stuff on Facebook, all the dumb opinions, like the echo chambers. I don't have to deal with any of that. I have Instagram where all I see is pictures and I like go outside. I don't have cable. I don't have any of that stuff. I separate myself from those sources of negativity as much as I can. And just getting rid of Facebook by itself and not having to look at my feed every day because I was just addicted to looking at a feed. I don't like, it's just, it's, it really just opens your eyes that there's just more out there and like just seeing your local areas, just like going around your local towns and just realizing that it's not the way the news portrays everything is just, it's eye opening. And I encourage anybody who's listening to just like, don't necessarily delete your Facebook, but just stay off of it as less like just be on it less Um, distant, your distance yourself from those negative spaces that, or that don't care about you. They just want you to look because they get advertising revenue. So just stay away from that stuff. You don't get money for lo- lo- looking at those bad stories. You're just giving money to bad people who want to keep posting those bad stories. It's easy to like start a pattern when you're scrolling on Facebook and that can create a pattern of like negative, negative thoughts and negative emotions because of all the, like the hate you see on them. So it's like kind of perpetuating the negativity. Ex- yeah. Yeah, it's all it's all about like what you what you put in is what you get out. So if you watch a, a no, nothing but negativity, then you're going to exude nothing but negativity, right? Yeah. So it's uh, I don't know. I I talk to my wife all the time about like today's society just being the most like having all that knowledge at your fingertips. You know what I mean? Like. You, you hear about all these bad things going on all the time. But if you look at the statistics, like you mentioned, Tim, like they've actually gone down a lot, but we just know about it more, you know? Um, so, yeah, I think it's crazy. Um, that's, why I, that's why I try and, like, this morning, for instance, I went on uh, a walk with my daughter, and uh, that was because she was being a three-year-old. And, uh, so, (laughs) and so, uh, yeah, I took her on a walk and man, the, the, the sunrise this morning was just gorgeous. You know what I mean? Like the whole orange sky and the sun coming over the houses. And it's just like, man, like that's God, you know, like, how can you, how can you look at that and just be angry? You know what I mean? So definitely what you put in is what you was, what you're going to exude and put out. That could be one of your good things for your list. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I've actually uh I've been trying to do something similar to that. So I've been trying to look at gratitudes. And uh so for a while I've actually um 
looked at kind of like my relationship, right? So like between me and my wife, I would see a lot of the negative things that she was doing, you know, whether she wouldn't help out or, you know, during the day or whether, you know, she didn't clean the dishes when I got home or, you know, whatever it might've been, right? And so I just focused on those negatives and I painted this picture of just, you know, this negative wife or this bad wife, essentially, that, you know, I painted for myself. And so uh, I've really tried to focus on, like gratitudes for my wife, like some good things that she's done. And man, when, when I first started, of course, I still stuck on like, well, I don't know, man, like she didn't do this. She didn't do that. She, you know, whatever. And then now I'm like, I had to like look past the actions of the day and look more at like who she is as a person and like coming home and just seeing that she's wrapped up with the kids. Like, yeah, maybe the dishes aren't done and I have to do them. Like, I don't care. Like she's wrapped up with all the kids and the kids are just getting that that cuddle, that nice, like, essence of love, that positive, you know, energy from my wife, and it's like, like, that's, that's good stuff, you know, and I'm writing that down in my gratitude book now, you know what I mean, like, where before, I'm like, oh my god, more dishes, and she's just watching TV, when in reality, it's like, she's giving my kids that, you know, that sense of love, that sense of, like, belonging, and uh, that's what I want, you know what I mean, so... Yeah, I've been doing the gratitude thing. It's helped out a lot. Yeah, I would, uh, that may be my next step. I, do, I don't do like self gratitudes. I definitely just try to focus on the positive things. Like, again, I look at that uplifting news, uh, to get motivated. Um, I just, I just try to d- distance myself from things that are intentionally negative so people can get money from them. So I don't try to pay attention to any of that kind of stuff. Um, but Mikey, you got anything else you want to add? Uh, you got any other thoughts? Um, any other parts of your story that you feel you didn't get to vocalize that you would like to talk about? I think, uh, just being a better person, you know, through my progression, um, I've met, I I've been dating a girl for three and a half years and, uh, she's made it, she's also made it a lot easier for me to see the light and everything because, you know, she's been so good to me. And, um, so like, you know, if if you were in like me or me or Tim's shoes, where you've had a you know a bad breakup or a you have an ex somewhere that's done done you wrong, like you know something good's gonna happen later. Like it's not the only you know it's not the only person, and you shouldn't base your life off of that because someone better is gonna come, and you know you're you're gonna improve. Exactly. Yeah, there is hope. There's there's plenty of fish in the sea. Uh... Just because one woman was bad and may have, quote unquote, ruined you doesn't necessarily mean that's true for all women. Uh, My ex-wife and my current wife are completely different people, like not even the littlest, not even they don't even share the same littlest bit at all. Um, two, Two totally different people. And even though I felt like my ex-wife had taken my best years from me, um, here I am 31 and I feel as young as I did when I divorced, divorced my first wife. So, uh, it's not like she took the best years from me. Um, and she doesn't live rent free in my head. I only brought her up for the podcast because other, so other people could hear, but that's the other thing is don't let those people live rent free in your head. Cause they're definitely not letting you live rent free in theirs. Um, that's one of my favorite things to read is when people are like, don't dwell on that because now they're just in your head and they're not paying rent. So don't <laughs> let that happen to you. Where did you, uh, where'd you read that at Tim? I can't remember. I've seen it on so many, I've seen it all over. I've seen it on Instagram. I've seen it on Reddit. It's I've seen, I've heard other people say it. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Cause Sabrina told me that the other day and I never heard it before, but you know, it was when, when we were going through those tough weeks and uh, that's what she said. She was like, hey, it's, you know, it's, it's okay to grieve. It's okay to be in that negative space for a little bit. But, you know, don't, don't buy a mortgage while you're there. You know, take out some rent, but uh, come back home. And it's like, dang, like, <laughs> holy, holy cow. Um, yeah, it, it hit me. I was like, well, shoot. Um, all right, then I'm going to go ahead and start trying to process this grief. Because, you know, as men, we try and just force it out, you know, and try and shove it down. Like, I'm a... I'm a man. I don't feel these feelings. It's not okay. And when in reality is it is okay. And I had to process that. And her saying that to me it allowed me to do that. So, um, yeah, that's fantastic. Um, but 
other than that, man, uh, I really appreciate you coming out to uh, the podcast and sharing your story. Um, there's a lot of really, really in-depth stuff here. Um, a lot of stuff that I didn't even know that you went through. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry that you had to go through it. But at the same time, I'm happy you went through it because it, it led you to who you are today. And uh, and uh, I hope uh, I hope we can get uh, your girlfriend on, man. Uh, you obviously have been uh, talking to me about her and how highly you speak of her. And I'd love to, you know, meet this wonderful woman as uh, most... Every every good guy out there has a strong woman behind them. And so, uh, yeah, I just really appreciate you coming on and, and sharing your story. And uh, I, I know it's going to provide hope and uh, kind of a way forward for those out there listening. Um, but thanks, everyone, for coming. Uh, I appreciate you guys coming out. I'm proud of every single one of you for uh, hitting the start button on this episode and listening all the way through. Um, you guys are here to, to witness another story and uh, kind of learn their way or Mikey's way of um, progressing in his life. And I'm very proud that you guys have taken that step for your life as well. Um, remember, always progression, never regression. Uh, you can't change yesterday and you can't predict tomorrow. All you've got is right now, today. So be the best version today. Uh, that you can be be better today than you were yesterday, and you'll always be in that state of progression. Uh, thanks, guys, and uh, have a good week.